Give me about a few minutes to move through this text. John 3.16, very familiar passage in the Bible that everyone knows, but everybody don't usually apply this text. We love to say it, but we don't all do it. Look at somebody say, we don't all do it. The Bible simply says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Look at somebody say everlasting life. Everlasting life. I want you to understand on this morning, Jesus came teaching and preaching about love. Mm -hmm. He came talking, uh, bless be God, about loving thy neighbor as I love thyself. He came Amen. talking about long suffering. He came talking about loving your enemy. He came yeah. talking about love. Look at somebody say he came talking about love. He came talking about love. A lot of folks say this text, but we don't all apply this text. We love saying, you know, we love someone, but we only love them when it's, you know, comfortable for us. If you're doing something we want you to do, then all of a sudden we love you. But the moment that person doesn't do something you feel like they should be doing, all of a sudden it seems like your love begins to die. Look at somebody and say, be careful about that word love. You know, my mama used to tell me, be careful about telling girls you love them. Because you'll mess around and tell the wrong person you love them. And then all of a sudden, you'll find your car out there looking like a dump kick. They don't do eggs on it and flour. And all of you, you know, that kind of stuff to take your pain off. She say, be careful of the people you tell you love them. But he came teaching and teaching about love. Now we love our neighbors and we love our friends, but uh, is it is it so hard for us to love them after a long night that they've been out drinking and smoking, and uh, now they come into the house of God and they sit beside you, and then you smell the marijuana and weed raking from their bodies, and all of a sudden you start frowning your nose up at them, but you don't understand that uh, just a few days ago you were doing the sack. Same thing. Y'all don't want to be real here on this morning. Just a few days ago, you were smoking marijuana, but because your blood pressure medicine don't mix with that weed no more, doctor told you you better not drink and, and take that sugar medicine. Now you don't drink no more. But if it wasn't for that, yeah. <laughs> some of us will still be drinking. Some of us will still be smoking, but because God allowed certain things to happen in your life, now you don't drink no more. But you look down on your brothers and your sisters because of the situation they're in. But if you can just have a flashback just for about 30 seconds, y'all ain't going to be real here in this morning. Look at somebody and say, sometimes you got to have a flashback. But you look at our children and how they're raised and you see folk and they come to church with attitudes and you wonder what is it that's wrong with them that they have these attitudes. You begin to look at these kids and, and some of us adults and we come to church and they, they look like they have an attitude but instead of us loving them, we begin to point the finger at them. We begin to say stuff like they got a bad attitude. Yeah. Well, you don't know what they've been through. Yeah. You don't know if they had something to eat last night or not. Yeah. You don't know the hell they caught. They could have been abused last yeah. night. Right. So instead of us pointing the finger, somebody might got to be on. Instead of us pointing the finger, yes, we begin to, bless the God, point and look at them and say, oh, they got bad attitudes or something wrong with them. You need to start, instead of pointing fingers, you need to make up your mind right now. I'm going to pray instead of talking. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. ain't going to be real anymore. Look at a neighbor say, neighbor, it's time to pray sometime instead of talking. Problem is nowadays we do more talking in church than praying. Folk come to church to get prayer, then all of a sudden by the time they get home, everybody in town know their business, but they came for prayer. Y'all don't want to be real in here. 
That's why right. folk don't want to tell their business no more to the preacher because yeah. certain I'm folk get shot and yeah. to go back and talk about everything that went on. Y'all yeah. yeah. don't want to talk in here. Yeah. Look at a neighbor say, neighbor, you got to be careful what you say. Yeah. Got these babies, they getting wonder why they got bad attitudes. Well, it's simply because they, they grandma is fatty. Fatty ain't maybe. The mama, 20 something oh, child, yeah. grandma still trying to club. The baby, yeah. <laughs> the mama clubbing. Everybody at the club at the same time. Yeah. They getting dropped off the, the Madea house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Madea ain't there all her own self. She trying to go to the club. Now the child yeah. is all mixed up because there's no love. Yeah. They find love in all the wrong places. Yeah. Y'all yeah. say, yeah. looking for love in all the wrong places. And you're wondering what's going on with our young people. It's simply that they're looking for love in all the wrong places. Look at somebody and say, where are you looking for love at? Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, where are you looking for love at? Look at somebody and say, I'm glad. He loved me. We got to make sure we're showing love on this morning. Y'all know I like, I watch a lot of movies because my daddy raised me. We watch, <laughs> we watch, we watch a lot of movies. I love movies too, baby. But I, I begin to, when I was looking at this scripture, I began to look at the Green Mile. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. How many of y'all done seen the Green Mile? Yeah, okay. Well, Michael Clark Duncan, uh -huh. this big black fella. Yeah, yeah. But he had some unusual Powers. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But with the powers that he had, he he began to see these two little children that were murdered mm -hmm. by a man that was staying with their parents. Mm -hmm. And and he began to try to bring them back to life. Yes. Yes, he did. But as he began to try to bring them back to life, the love he had in him, he didn't want to see nothing die. So he cried so because he wanted these kids to come back, but when they caught up with him, they tried to accuse him of murdering the children. You got to be careful of who you try to help because sometimes you may try to help somebody, but then at the end, you end up being wrong. Y'all ain't going to be real with me, yo. Sometimes in your life, you don't try to help some folk, and when you try to help them, you end up on the wrong end. Yeah. Right. Look at somebody and say, be careful who you try to help. Yeah. But the story goes on now. He's in prison, yes, sir. and he's there, and, and, the, and, and Tom Hanks is, is the man over the prison, and Tom Hanks is suffering, uh, blessed be God, with some kind of sickness in his body. I don't know if he was passing kidney stones or what, but the love that Michael Clark Duncan had in the movie John Coffee, yeah, yeah. he began to, the man walked by, he, he said, I'm tired of seeing him suffer like this. Yeah. Isn't it just like our Savior? Sometimes he get tired of seeing us suffer like that. Sometimes he got tired of it. It frustrated him in his spirit. So one day he was walking by the cell. And that big fella grabbed him and snatched him to the cell and let that power go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some movies, all movies ain't bad. Some of y'all like, I don't watch movies, but some movies, you can get a lesson out of. So he grabbed him because of the love he had on the inside of him, grabbed him in that condition that was going wrong with him. He loved him so that he brought it unto himself. Yeah. Is there any folk in here that really got some love for some folk that when was the last time you prayed for someone other than yourself? Y'all don't want to be real in here this morning. Look at somebody say, when the last time you prayed for somebody? When the last time you prayed for somebody else's children? But he had so much going on on the inside of him. Yeah. And even though he was on his way to be crucified. Yeah. Don't that sound like our Savior? Yeah. John Coffey on his way to the electric chair for something he did not do. Yeah. Same way our Savior was. He was on his way to be sacrificed yeah. for something he did not do. Yeah. But he's sitting there now. And even on his way to the electric chair, yeah. he... The man that's over the whole jail, the, yeah. the warden. Yeah. Yeah. His wife was sick. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, tell the story. With cancer. Uh, yeah. Looking like she's about to die. Yeah. 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 
but some kind of way they snuck him out. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, when you work for God, people will do stuff for you they won't do for other folks. Now, I done been to prison, I done been to jail before, but when you in there, they not gonna let you out. But when you got God on the inside, they'll make an exception for you. Look at somebody and say, God getting ready to make an exception for me. Even though he's there and he know he's being wrongly accused, he did not get an attitude and say, I'm not going to share love. He said, I'll go. And they took him there. And y'all see this many times in our Bible. They really were just trying to use Michael Clark Duncan as Jesus on this movie. But he went in the room with them. There's many scriptures in the Bible where Jesus went in the room with the little girl and he did all. And, and, and they said when he went in there, the room, you seen the movie, the room began to shake. Look at somebody say, the room getting ready to shake. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all miss it. Look at somebody say, the room getting ready to shake. But as he went into the room with the girl, this woman, the room began to shake and he began to take on that infirmity. Yeah. Take your time, baby. And he began to take it out of her and when he got back to the room he was in so much pain but the, the fact still remained that he loved her. Yeah. And as he began to look at her everything changed and they took him back and they tried to console him and say it's going to be alright big fella. Yeah. But he began to push out that infirmity. But then before he did that, the man that was causing all the trouble in the prison. You got to understand when you work for God, there's going to be some people that cause trouble. <laughs> Y'all don't want to be real in here. Some of you, I don't care if you go to jail. I don't care if you go to church. It's going to always be somebody that's going to aggravate your nerve. Y'all don't want to be real in here. Some folk get up every morning just to find a way to bring you hell. You don't believe that. It's some folk that's anointed to bring you down. They sit up all night thinking, now I'm going to see what I'm going to do tomorrow because I, I did this. I told the boss on it yesterday. That ain't work. She came back talking about Jesus. All right, tomorrow I'm going to cuss out and see if that works. I'm gonna, I'm one, some kind of way they're going to get out of here. But he took that in from it. And he put it in the man. That was, you know, causing all the trouble in there. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, God getting ready to transfer all that evil stuff. That the devil been trying to put in me. He about to put it into my enemy. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't. Y'all don't want to believe that God getting ready to take some enemies out. Look at somebody say, this enemy you see today, you ain't going to see no more. ready to move. I'm cutting and pacing here this morning. But First John let me hear that C sharp. <laughs> well First John verse chapter 4 verse number 10 says this is love. Not that we love God but that God Loved us. <laughs> he sent his only son to be sacrificed for our sins. Amen. Look at somebody say God's love is not based upon how much we love him. Yes, Romans 5 and 6 says, For when we were yet without strength, yeah. in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Yeah. And when you look at, yes, Pastor Brian Hank standing here today, yeah. and the fact that God died for my sins, yeah. is not. Yes, because I love him. Yes, the fact is that he loved me. Yes, and even though, yes, I was still yet smoking weed. Even though I was selling drugs all night long. Running motorcycles. 
hotel, the motel, yes, but he still loved me. You ought to look at a neighbor right quick and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that the Lord still, he still loved me. When I look at, yes, the gifts God gave me, I realize that I do not deserve all of the gifts that he gave me. When I look at my life and look at all the wrong I've done, I do not deserve all of the blessings that he has in store for me. When I look at my life, I notice that I deserve to go to hell. But look at the Lord. Look at how much he loved me. That I'm still here today. I could have been still on death row right now. But look what the Lord has done. You ought to grab your one good neighbor and shake him by the hand and tell me I'm glad I'm glad the Lord loved me because if he didn't love me I'd probably be sinking deep in sin fall from the peaceful shore but the master of the sea granddaddy he heard he heard my cry and up from the waters he lifted me you want to look at your neighbor and say what lifted you you want to tell them love lifted me look at somebody and say love lifted me and God loves he loved us so much he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You want to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord, he gave, yes, his only son. He gave the best gift. He gave his son. He couldn't find no one good enough to sin, to die for our sins. He couldn't send Noah because Noah had a drinking problem. He couldn't send Moses because Moses had an attitude problem. And time, somebody made Moses mad. He would have came back down to here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He couldn't sin. He couldn't sin Abraham because Abraham was a big liar. So what he did was he sent his son to die for our sins. And I have not name. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that he is Lord. Is there anybody here? Grace that the Lord. Y'all don't want to have no church in here. The Lord. For our sins. Is there anybody here? You're happy today. You want to run and grab somebody and tell that neighbor, I'm so glad. That's why you can't get delivered. You won't move. Tell somebody, I'm so glad that he died for me. I'm glad he died. He died for my sins. And that's the reason why I sing so hard. Somebody say, why is it that you preach so hard? Break on me when I say that's the reason that I sing so hard. The reason is because all night and all day I got a watching over me. Is there anybody here glad that you got angels watching over you? You want to make up your mind today. Come hell or high water, I'm going to give God praise because he loved me so. I don't have to wait until I get a check in the mail. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and the Y'all ain't trying to have no church. Ah! <laughs> he done for me. My, 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 my soul cries out hallelujah. I thank the Lord for saving me. Some of y'all been weeping, but we've been made and do for a night. But joy, look at 
somebody to say, John, you're coming in the morning. Is there anybody need John? You want to grab your name and tell them joy on the way. I know you've been crying, but joy on the way. I know you've been stressing, but joy on the way. That does not mean that you're not going to go through. But God say in the midst of it all, I'm going to give you joy when you should be crying. You're going to have joy when you should be weeping. You're going to see your shout. Look at your neighbor right quick. Shake your neighbor. Shake them real good. Grab your one good neighbor. Shake your neighbor. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. And tell them neighbor. Neighbor. We coming out of this sand with our hands lifted up. It's not by chance that I'm here this morning, but I'm here to help you. Come out of what you're in. You need to shake them like you mean it. Shake them like you're going to shake it all the way off. And tell them, neighbor, neighbor, ah, neighbor. I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Because God loves me. Because he loves me so. It doesn't matter if they don't like me. He loves me so. It doesn't matter if they don't care about me. I know the Lord loves me. Somebody been weeping at night. But God say, I see your tears. And I'm getting ready to turn your tears. Turn them into joy. I seen you crying last night. I see you walking the floor. But the Lord say, I'm bringing you joy. And I'm bringing you love. You act like you're scared this morning. You want to jump on your feet and shout glory. Grab your one good neighbor. I need you to grab this one. And grab that neighbor. Don't hold that hand like it's been dipped in lemon juice. But I need you to hold that hand like you got the Holy Ghost. And shake that hand. Let the anointing go through. And tell them, neighbor, I'm getting ready to bring you out of this. My next praise is delivering your family. My next praise is delivering that angry person that's bothering you on the job. This next praise is about to release the jail sales. Y'all act like you're scared to talk. This next praise is about to open doors that's been shut in your face. You ought to open your mouth and shout glory. Look at somebody and say, I come to give him glory. Don't doubt me on the symbols, hit me hard. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, I come to give him glory. Somebody will say, well, he ain't giving no message, no subject. My subject is, this is my love song. Because he loved me. Out of all the wrong I've done, he still... Somebody, if you just let your mind go back, you'll feel the spirit come from. Out of all the wrong I've done, he still... don't want to be real nowadays. I done made mistakes since I gave my hand to Christ. But it's all of a cause, his grace and his mercy. Because he, he loves me so. Look at somebody and say, I'm glad he loves me. Somebody missed it. Tell somebody, I'm glad he loves me. Someone this morning said, I just need prayer this morning. I've been going through. I just need prayer on this morning. I, I refuse to see to leave the same way that I came on this morning. If that's you, tell someone to say, excuse me. I just need to go to the altar for a minute. 
I gotta pray. I gotta pray.